Welcome to another edition of Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. We're reviewing major events and happenings in the diplomatic world as leaders try to chart a way forward in relations. Director General, Boli Tax Center for International Diplomacy and Strategic Studies, Professor Bola Akiterewa, is here to help us understand the dynamic. But let's begin with Qatar. Qatar has outrightly refused to give in to demands made by Saudi Arabia and three other allies which accuse it of supporting extremist groups like the Muslim Brotherhood. These allies met on Monday in the hope that Qatar would see reason to end support for the group, close down major Gulf broadcaster Al Jazeera, and downgrade diplomatic ties with Iran and shut down Turkish military base in the Emirates. But Qatar says the demands are reminiscent of the extreme and punitive conduct of bully states that have historically resulted in war. The meeting on Monday held in Cairo, Egypt, was supposed to be another attempt at convincing Qatar to comply with the demands in order to have sanctions lifted on its economy and airspace. But with Qatar's defiance, leaders decided the restriction would remain. However, four Arab states refrained from joining in imposing further sanctions on Qatar, but said they were disappointed at the country's negative response to the demands. There is no political and economic boycott. This will continue until Qatar modifies its policies for the better. We are all hoping for this to happen. In reference to the previous measures taken, as mentioned by my colleagues, there are constant negotiations and we reserve every right to take measures in accordance to international law. Qatar has accused Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Egypt of clear aggression and say the accusations cited when the severed ties a month ago were clearly designed to create anti-Qatar sentiment in the West. We believe that, that this, uh, the entire campaign is mainly driven uh, by Saudi and, and the United Arab Emirates and I think those are uh, the countries we have to uh, engage in what are the real motives and the real grievances behind it. Qatar, whose international diplomatic and commercial profile has risen dramatically in the last 20 years, driven largely by gas revenues, denies the accusation by Gulf countries and have described them as so draconian. They suspect they were never seriously meant for negotiation and were meant to cripple Qatar's sovereignty. Turkey, which has been thrown into the mix because of its military base in the country, has reaffirmed its support for Qatar. President Tayyip Erdogan, during a recent interview on the topic, said Qatar can count on Turkey's loyalty. Why don't they make this request from CENTCOM? The United States and France have a base there as well. Why do they ask this from Turkey, but not from them? As Turkey, we remain loyal to our agreement with Qatar and would hold on to it until the end. The United States says it is increasingly concerned that the dispute between Qatar and the other Gulf states is at an impasse and would drag on for a long time. While the United States says progress could be made to heal the rift, but as for a solution, it is not likely one would be found immediately. While the UK says progress could be made to heal the rift, but as for a solution, it's so likely one would be found immediately. We remain very concerned about that ongoing situation involving Qatar and uh, GCC countries. We've become increasingly concerned that that dispute is at an impasse at this point. We believe that this could potentially drag on for weeks. It could drag on for months. Um, it could possibly even intensify. But the general thrust of it, uh, I think you can see what people want to see is a, a de-escalation and, uh, and progress on uh, tackling the funding of terrorism in the region and uh, progress towards an end of this blockade. Back home in Qatar, citizens are writing messages of support on mural in reaction to the Arab boycott. Local media says hundreds of men are signing up for the military as others deliver jibes at Arab rulers on social media. 
Professor Bolakitari, well, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, let's begin with the Gulf crisis. Are Saudi Arabia, Iran, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, are they all making a mistake by picking on Qatar? We can look at it in two ways. Yes, they are making a mistake. No, they are not making any mistake. They are making a mistake simply because all these countries themselves, all right, cannot claim not to have skeleton in their cobbles. Uh, the critical problem of the region, all right, goes beyond political extremism. All of them are looking forward to the more developed countries for one form of assistance. And in this case, their politics is more of intrigues in terms of competition for international help. So by the time these countries are saying, yes, we will not agree with Qatar, or we want to single this country out for whatever reason, they easily forget that at the end of the day, what goes around comes around. So in this case, we can look at it as a fundamental error. But there is also the error of terror, and that is where we bring in the other argument. The accusation levied against Qatar is that this country, for whatever reason, is aiding and abetting international terrorism. Mm. 